Uh, moving on now, though, to a series of catch-ups, uh, news catch-ups and uh, updates that we want to cover in fairly quick succession. So if it doesn't seem as though we're being super, um, uh, what's the word, super uh, forensic in this in this these conversations, it's mainly because the links will be below. But we wanted to to give these sort of honourable mentions. And and Andy in particular drew my attention when we were putting the agenda together for this month to news from uh, not not. <laughs> sorry, my nose, sorry, Notre Dame. <laughs> oh dear, sorry. Ha. You know when you haven't spoken like in in, in for, for much in a morning and you just can't get your mouth around words. Uh, news from that very famous cathedral in Paris and the fire um, that took hold last year. Uh, one year on from that, officials are struggling to keep track. Uh, uh, they're struggling to keep the restoration on track. Um, do you, do you, are you at all surprised by this, uh, Andy? No, I think uh, to, to, to put it in, in, in perspective, um, the uh, or, or, or to fill in some some background rather, the uh, rebuilding of uh, Notre Dame was well pledged by Emmanuel Macron, the uh, yes. French president, as a as a sort of national. Um, every, it, this sounds like the British government. Everyone needs to roll up their sleeves and get on with it. Mm -hmm. um, Macron said uh, uh, almost as soon as the fire uh, had been put out, um, there is a French general in charge of the mm -hmm. operation. Mm -hmm. uh, Macron has pledged that the cathedral should reopen by 2024. But not surprisingly, you know, a, a restoration project like that would be complex enough in normal times taking place against a pretty severe lockdown, which France has operated for uh, coronavirus, mm -hmm. um, it's next to impossible to make progress, I think. Mm -hmm. So this isn't unexpected. No. Um, uh, Jean-Louis Gougelin, who is the uh, effectively the in, char in charge of the project, is quoting a Guardian article here as saying, uh, if everyone rolls up their sleeves and the work is well planned, it's conceivable that returning to the cathedral returning the cathedral to a place of worship within five years will not be an impossible feat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the area around the cathedral will be far from finished and perhaps the spire will not be completed, but the cathedral will once again be a place of worship and this is our aim. Um, the spire being one of the more controversial parts of the restoration because it was added later mm. um, in a 19th century restoration and some people argue actually it's it sort of... Uh, it, this is an, an opportunity to get rid of something that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm. Uh, and there have been arguments about what kind of restoration should take place. So, um, it, you know, whether it should uh, be a return to status quo ante or, or as, as near as possible, or whether there should be the opportunity should be taken to maybe um, reinvent certain aspects of the of the cathedral fabric, as has happened over the centuries. That's uh, you know still in, in in play. So, all in all. This isn't a surprising story. It's unfortunate. It may be, it'll take a bit longer. These projects often do. But um, hopefully the Notre Dame will, in the next 10 years or so, be back to looking itself. Yeah. Whatever itself is, is at the end of it. Absolutely. Um, additionally, there's the follow on from uh, a story that we covered last month uh, linked with the Hobby Lobby and uh, Oxford University. And this is the news that an Oxford professor has been arrested on suspicion of ancient papyrus theft. Uh, now, you, you, I saw a slightly wry smile there, Mr. Brockman. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> now, we, we, we have to say, um, th th this is um, Dr. Dirk Obink, uh, who's an associate professor in papyrology and Greek literature at Oxford University. Um, he has been detained and questioned by Thames Valley Police. The investigation's ongoing, so we can't really be more specific than that. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly, uh, Dr. Obink denies uh, any wrongdoing and says that the claims are a malicious, malicious attempt to harm his reputation and career. But, um, you know, new, new viewer start here. Um, this is a saga that's gone on for some time. The Hobby Lobby, with its sort of, um, uh, well, it's funded by uh, billionaire uh, evangelical Christians in the United States, the Green family, who own the Hobby Lobby chain of craft stores, mm -hmm. um, spent a lot of money buying uh, antiquities and alleged antiquities uh, related to the... Uh, effectively the Bible. Mm. Um, we're talking here about fragments of papyri that were uh, uh, purported to be early uh, early examples of, for example, uh, Bible texts and so on. Mm -hmm. Some of them have now been proven to be fakes, 
Um, so as we said last time, they have at least been providing employment to Middle Eastern, poor Middle Eastern forgers. And um, they also returned to artists. Artists. artists, sorry, artists. I beg your pardon. Yeah, uh, yeah, ar ar artisans. Artisans, uh, yeah. And uh, more seriously, they, they've um, returned thousands of artifacts which were exported illegally from Iraq yeah. during, um, in, in the last... Uh, well, period since the Iraq War, so uh, most recent Iraq War. So it's a it's a grim story. It's, it's a grim story of uh, cock up and conspiracy. Allegedly, um, it'll play out. But as as we said at the moment, uh, Dr. robbing has been arrested in question, but denies any wrongdoing. Mm. I just want to just briefly draw uh, people's attention to, and I'm not necessarily going to link to the conversation, but to a conversation that, that surrounded this story on the RK Soup Facebook page, where, uh, and it's been, it's been expressed elsewhere as well, hence I'm not necessarily going to link to this conversation, where some people are, are suggesting, well, if they're fake, has a crime really been committed? And the, the thing is, the professor whether he sold them knowingly or unknowingly, was still selling artifacts that ostensibly were not fake. You know, so, so in that sense, it, 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 it's who knows who knew what. That's a weird, that's an interesting sentence, isn't it? Who knows who knew what? But also, at the same time, uh, arguably, there could be an extra crime of selling fakes knowingly you know i mean who knows in that sense it, it, the point is this just this doesn't get him off the hook if if he happened to have been selling um fakes then they, it may put him in more trouble all of this is underscored with the word allegedly as well i should say um thank i saw andy just going oh you can't say <laughs> uh, but yes very much, very much allegedly um but the point is is just even yeah as i say even if it is if, you know because because Last month there was a story where an awful lot of the stuff that's been bought has been shown to be fraud, fraudulent or fake. Um, that doesn't uh, get him off the hook in, in, any, in any meaningful way. So I just thought I'd mention. In, in fact, I think it's worth. I, I think it's worth mentioning the fact that um, anyone who follows the art world at all um, will know that it's relatively reg a relatively regular thing for even the largest auction houses to withdraw artifacts, paintings, because they're found to be um, faked or their provenance is found to be questionable. Hmm. And, dubious um, dubious so, origin was the phrase used, wasn't it? Dubious, yes, of dubious or unpro unproven origin. And hmm. uh, yeah, um, and a, a, a fake artifact is created by those artisans who create them with the intention of defrauding the person who, you often with the intention of the per defrauding the person who purchases them. Hmm. Um, some things are sold as genuine reproductions, obviously, but the ones that aren't flagged up as being reproductions when they're sold, that's fraud. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and I think that, that brings us to the end of our updates and, uh, and um, things to keep an eye on. So um, 